Hey, Lathero, how's it going? This is Ryan with TrendLizard.com. I hope you're doing good. Sorry it took me a little time to get this video to you. I finally got around to it. It's Friday evening. Going to take a look at a few uh, ETF slash stocks for you. We're going to start with an ETF, TLT, which is the 20-year Treasury Bond ETF. And then we'll take a look at GE, General Electric, of course, and then F Ford uh, to wrap it up. So with TLT, I believe I've looked at this one for you before on a larger time frame. Uh, it's pretty hard to say exactly where it is in this labeling overall. What we have seen over and over uh, since its inception, at least with our data back in 2002, is five wave moves, followed by ABC pullbacks that retrace the Fibonacci portion of that five wave move. So another five wave move, ABC pullback into the yellow Fibonacci area, one, two, three, four, five, five wave move, ABC pullback into the yellow area. Off the 2018 low, we had a nice five wave move. Stalled, it completed in 2020, and now 2021, it is pulled back into that yellow area. So obviously, it's hard to say exactly and for any great certainty that this one will be the same, but there's a pretty repetitive pattern that we've seen to this point, uh, and we will see if that is going to change. As is, note that this yellow support area, the Fibonacci area, runs to about 129. So the 61.8% retracement of this five wave move here is around 129. To this point, every pullback has found support in that yellow area. So for the trend to stay true, we need to see this find a low within uh, that area somewhere above 129. So let's go ahead and zoom in and see if we can figure out if the pullback is over yet or not. So this takes a little closer look at that five wave move to the upside. Clean stuff, five wave moves every step of the way, overall a five wave move, and then you have this large pullback that moved deep into the yellow support area, uh, but found a low, turned higher. So the question is, is this over, is this not? There's two ways to label it, let's look at both. One would be that we had the ABC pullback, and then we have the resumption of the uptrend here uh, with a five wave move and then a pullback from here. So let's go ahead and zoom in and, and more deeply consider this possibility. This looks at that recovery here off of the 2021 low. Starts good, gave us what looked like a five wave move to the upside, uh, the issue that I am having with this is that the down move off of December's high also looks like a trendy five wave move. In fact, it might be even a cleaner five wave move uh, than what we're seeing to the upside here. Now, this pullback has already retraced almost exactly 61.8% of this up leg here. If this pullback was just correcting this up leg here, which is what would have to be the case if a low was in, it shouldn't move much below 139. The trendy downside action suggest that it will, uh, the implication here would be you get trendy downside action, maybe you get a bounce, and then you would get another five wave down move that seemingly would, would ultimately move below 139. So that all of that makes me concerned and makes me think maybe a low is not in. Now that could change. We could find a, a low here, price could turn higher and move above 149, and then suddenly everything looks great and uh, cheerful and all that stuff. But at the moment, I'm not a believer. Here's a look at the other way that we can label that pullback here, and that would be as ABC for wave A, and then whatever recovery we have here as wave B to the upside uh, with a C wave down yet to come. Now, all of that needs to happen above 129 to stay bullish overall, or at least to make sense in kind of the, the format we've discussed it, where we're getting these five wave up moves retraced uh, by three wave pullbacks. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. But I think this labeling makes more sense. And another reason it makes more sense is if we look at this in the context of IEF. Now, IEF is the 10-year, I believe, 7 to 10-year Treasury Bond ETF, which we follow at TrendLizard.com every day uh, and discuss more in detail on the weekends. Uh, it's the orange one. Uh, and the, the red and black one is TLT. So you can see they move pretty pretty close to one another. Now, the thing about IEF is that it has already confirmed a larger pullback off of these highs back here in 2020. So maybe TLT will go a different way, but it would seem more likely that they would go in the same direction. So I think you have to, um, unless it bounces off of 139 and, and makes some noise here to the upside, I think you'd have to expect generally for a larger ABC pullback to form. If it is able to bounce off that level and move above 149, we can start looking at other considerations, but I think as is the expectation would be, we got the five wave up move. We're in a larger ABC pullback that hopefully stays above 129 or at least mostly stays above that level. And then once that completes, we can uh, look for a larger 
fifth wave uh, up move to begin again. Of course, we have to see signs of low of a low first, especially in the current interest rate market environment. But with what we have to work with so far, most specifically this 2020 2021 pullback, this looks like a three wave move. You know, I'm not trying to make sense of the pattern with what's happening in the world. I'm just trying to make sense of the pattern and what we see here looks like a counter trend ABC move. So overall, that seems bullish. But of course, we will need proof of a low before it becomes a tradable event. And I think for now, you have to expect a larger pullback. There is TLT. Let us look now at GE, General Electric. Uh, this guy has had two trends in its life, as you can see here, at least with the data that we have dating back to 1980. We have a very large, obviously trendy advance to the upside. Not going to attempt to label this. It's a very strong, impressive move. It is a trendy move, I can guarantee you. What has happened since 2000 has been a much different story. You had a very clear pullback, very clear ABC pullback into the 2009 low. From there, it found a low and turned back, but unfortunately, that did not prove to be the resumption of the trend, and it broke down again to the downside. So this entire move, as massive as it is, still looks like one big counter trend move. The question that we have to ask is, did GE complete the ABC pullback here? Was it a truncated low? And by truncated, it means this low here is higher than this low. Generally, it would be lower or at least in that area. So the question is, again, did it complete? Let us go ahead and dive in and take a little bit closer look to see if we can get that answer. So this looks just at this down leg here. Um, it's not the most obvious, you know, thing to say, oh, yeah, no, this is definitely over. You know, I mean, if if it is over, it's an ABC, very quick C wave, not super clean or, or pretty, um, but it's possible. So let's keep diving and see what else we can find. If we look at the advance off of the 2020 low, we have a first, a second, a third and a fourth wave looks pretty potential full. You know, it looks like it could be coming be it could be becoming a trendy five wave move to the upside that's not yet complete. I think the most bullish thing about all this is the counter trend, clear counter trend nature of the 2021 pullback. It looks like just a matter of time before it heads higher and uh, gives us a trendy move. Now, still a little bit of dodginess about it because you have all this back and forth action here. Is this five wave move just the C wave of a counter trend recovery? That's a difficult one to say. I think right now on a shorter term time frame, you have to be bullish. But I think once you get this five wave move to complete, then I think you need to be cautious and probably step aside just to let it sort out, at least as this five wave move is corrected, if not something bigger. But I think once the five wave move completes, either way, you need to step step aside. As is, GE is going to look bullish on the midterm time frame as long as it stays above 73. Let's keep diving in here. This takes a closer look at that advance off the 2020 low. And again, first, second wave, nice five wave move, extended five wave move for wave three. And then all of this pullback, it almost looks a little bit like Amazon where you just have this choppy sideways mess. It's gotten a little sharper more recently, had a bounce and then broke down again. Really hard to say with any great confidence where it is in my view. Uh, it looks to me like a, a, a complex, excuse me as I punch my microphone, a complex ABC X ABC kind of move but it's just really hard to be certain when it's going to be over. So all we can really do is kind of corral it with a couple levels and see what happens. So let's continue to, to dive in here. This looks exactly and specifically at that pullback in 2021 and to show you kind of where we're getting with it. So it, the question becomes, okay, is this down leg off of November's high and A, B, C completed? If so, it'll stay above 92. A move above 106 would look really bullish and, and support this labeling. Or is it something more like, okay, A, B, C, X, A, still in that B wave. And in that instant, you would have, or in that instance, you would have a move below uh, 92 to confirm that you're still getting a C wave down. So there's, it's just, it's really hard to be, to be certain in, in a situation like that. But I think these are the key levels that you're watching here. 92 to the downside means this entire counter trend pullback's not over. 106 to the upside increases the likelihood that it is. And of course, just looking at price action itself, looking for trendy five wave up moves and counter trend pullbacks um, can provide that answer as well and just let you know that uh, whether it's it's getting ready to resume that uptrend or not. So let's dive in one more time. This looks at the advance just off of January's low here. And there's some potential there. I mean, it's a five wave move. It's this up, up leg right here. Doesn't necessarily mean a low is in. Even if this was just an ABC for this larger B, it would still be a five wave move. 
Um, but it's worth watching to see that there's a five wave move here. See if once this completes, if we can get a counter trend move that stays above 92 and then you have a buying opportunity. So that's a lot, a lot of different angles. I think the things you take away are the up leg off of 2020, 2020's low does look bullish and should be expected to continue higher. Hard to say if this counter trend pullback is over as discussed. A move below 92 says it's not. A move above 106 would make it look like it is. But I say you're bullish on the midterm time frame. Once you get a completed five wave move to the upside, uh, as shown in green, then I think you need to step aside and let uh, things shake out on their own before you move forward from there. So, and obviously I'll be more than happy to take a look at that for you as it progresses. So moving on now to F forward. Now this guy is very interesting. It's had a heck of a run off of the 2020 low, 2020 low, if I can say that right. Uh, basically uh, in its uh, back and forth at the start of uh, its life here uh, in the 90s, had a great run, hit its head around 24, 25, gave back all of it and then some in a large, massive ABC pullback, recorded a low below a dollar incredibly in 2009. I guess that was late 2008. Uh, kicked off to the upside from there, huge move, massive pullback, retraced a little bit more than 61.8% of this up leg, but still ultimately found support there. And then uh, with everything else off the 2020 low, went from about four to about 26 in a massive up leg, which now may be over. We're going to take a look at that. On this time frame, uh, the important things are that it's found resistance near this high. And so the risk would be that an even larger pullback, that this would be A, B, and C still to come. I don't think that's the case, but I mean, we can't really deny it. When you look at that advance off the 2008 low, Currently, it's a three-wave move. There's simply no denying it. That's what it is. Um, if it were to move lower and move below 12, it becomes pretty easy to see how this is just a three-wave move, not the start of a much larger five-wave move or anything like that. So a move below 12 on the largest time frames, very important. Wouldn't like it. Would have to bail if that happened. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more on Ford. This looks at the entire advance off the 2009 low. Shows you our five-wave move up into the 2014 high. Big chap, choppy, super time-consuming ABC pullback for wave two or B, whatever the case may be. And then you have that big up leg here, which we want to take a look at next. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Now, this up leg does look like a five-wave move. You can see the labeling I have here in blue, one, two, three, four, five. Every up leg within looks like a five-wave move as well. And then just recently in 2022 with some other things as well, um, there has been a reckoning. Uh, Ford has moved from 26 down to about 1750 at today's low. If it moves much lower, I think it's going to, uh, we're going to have to conclude that this up leg off of the 2020 low is over and is now being corrected. And this at <clears throat> this area here, 17, represents a 61.8% retracement of this up leg. So if this up leg is retraced by more than 61.8%, it opens the door to something larger to the downside, and that would point lower as a larger correction begins and that would obviously point to a more time consuming move because this is about what two years a little bit less than two years of upside movement uh, that would have to be corrected at the least so if that's the case it gets a little bit a uh, little bit sketchy there so let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more we're going to take a look at just this most recent up leg here um, so this is it it shows the subdivision to the upside it too looks like a five wave move and once that five wave move completed uh, you can see the carnage that happened. It really has taken a big hit in 2022 to the downside, including today where it lost almost 10% as it gapped lower. So let's go ahead and just zoom in on the decline itself. Um, shows some potential to continue. I mean, you look at this first down leg here off of January's high. It looks like a trendy five-wave move, and then you have this ABC recovery. Now it's breaking down again. So um, we got to see what happens here. If Ford keeps moving below 17 We'd have to conclude that this up leg is over. That would be a major test if we step back out um, of this whole pattern, just to make sure that this up move doesn't get left as a three wave move. So that will be the risk. I would think you would want to be, depending on your time frame, of course, I think you would want to be out of it if you're on any shorter trading time frame here. Um, but yeah, um, as far as reversing the direction of this thing, the first clue that this pullback has ended would be a move above 1975 because we have this down leg here that's Generally, a three-wave move, a move above 1975 would make it look like it is a three-wave move. The more conclusive line in the sand is 2260. If Ford can move above there, 
uh, that's going to be a very bullish event. And I think that becomes a buying opportunity uh, as basically, you know, let me step back out here as this up leg, you know, once it gets corrected, basically, once you start getting that next up leg get uh, started, then obviously that's a buying opportunity. As is, it doesn't seem like it's a great opportunity, just again, based on completing five wave patterns on, on multiple time frames and the potential for a larger correction of the downside. A move below 17 solidifies that. If it can turn higher and get above that area we're looking at there, 2260, uh, that would redeem it and create the potential that the major highs are not in. But I think as is, I think you need to be careful, especially if it continues down through 17. So loud to row, lots of words. Sorry about that. Just uh, interesting charts. Hopefully that is helpful for everybody else. Come visit us at trendlizard.com. If you have stocks that you want me to analyze, come visit us and sign up for one of our professional level services. I'll take a look at three of them uh, each month for you. Y'all have a good weekend. Talk to you next time.